today's topic is how to negotiate price. How to negotiate price in real estate. You know, today there is a huge upswing in price, right? We're seeing the uh, hot market. And in the hot market, price tends to, you know, um, you get well, prices tend to go a lot higher, but prices tend to go uh, uh, higher because of overbidding. That's what I'm trying to say is uh, overbidding tends to push prices higher. So how do you negotiate a really good deal in this kind of market? That is something that has been on your minds and we want to address that here in today's show. Mike, let's share some stories. I know you got a fun story today, but maybe we could start off by sharing a story of one of our, I don't know, most unique negotiations in price. That'd probably be a good place to start if you can recall any. Yeah, actually, I I, I have one that I'm currently uh, doing right now. It's not a land deal. It's for God knows what reason. It's a REI Conversion is a complete system to help you simplify your land investing business. With our core land management and CRM tool called REI Pebble, it streamlines the entire process of land investing. From automated printing and mailing of your offer letters, to easy document generations for contracts, to purchase agreements, all the way to tracking and managing your properties, buyer, and seller leads. REI Pebble helps you and your team save time, automate, and organize, allowing you to run your land investing business from anywhere and giving your land business the tools and system the chance to scale and grow. Get an exclusive extended free 30-day access into REI Pebble today. Take advantage of our low bulk mailing rates with no commitments by going to www.fearlessmillionaire.com slash pebble. House flip. <laughs> God knows what reason. Exactly. But um, the, the unique thing, actually, my son put me on to it. He wants to do the house flip oh, and nice. he needs somebody to write a check, I guess. So <laughs> that's where I come in. But anyway, we, we met with the people. Long story short, it, it's it's two sisters. The parents have passed away. They have a house. And, you know, it, it's very, it's, it's kind of a thin line, a gray area, how you, approach them on price stuff mm -hmm. because I don't want to insult them. And the house actually was not in real bad shape. Yeah. But the biggest thing I got out of it and the best way that I'm strategizing my price negotiation is I listen to them. Mm -hmm. I listen to them to try to find out what their motivation to sell is or what they actually want to, I asked them point blank. I said, what do you want out of it? What, mm -hmm. What's a perfect scenario for you? Um, and so that's where we are in it. And actually they gave me a number. It's a little more than I want to pay, but I'm confident that I can bring them down to a reasonable number. That's going to work not only for me, but for them also. So there it, it becomes a win-win. So are you, are you saying that by you listening to the, I'm sorry, was it a seller or a buyer? I mean, either way. Uh, sellers. Okay. The sellers. Yeah. That's Listening what I thought. To the seller. Yeah. I wanted to, yeah. So, um, when you're, when you're, are you saying that when you were listening to them and what, what are you listening for? Like, what is it you're listening for in order to get this, uh, I call it ammunition, but what are you listening for in order to help you reduce and negotiate price? A couple things. Number one, I want to see how educated they are with the market. Mm. Um, I, their house is worth more than they realize it is. Yeah. So that's a, that's a one up for me. Mm -hmm. I want to see what their motivation are. Are they tired of upkeeping it? And that was part of it. You know, they're like, we can't really upkeep this. We have our own families, our own homes. Yeah. Um, so it's an upkeep. It, it's a it's a burden, so to speak. Right. Right. So I'm playing off of the burden thing. I'm playing off that that they don't know the the, the uh, market as well. And I'm playing off the fact that that they just won't. They don't want to have showings. They just want to be done with it. So mm -hmm. you know, part of the technique is. Yeah, we can make that happen. We can put money in your pocket within two weeks. Mm. Um, so, so I'm playing off of those things, and they're the ones that gave me the ammunition. Now they could give me something else. I may have formed my my strategy a little bit different, but um, it's the same thing in land or or anything. Probably even in negotiations with with some of the building projects you've done. Mm. It's you you got to figure out what their motivation to for them to want to get rid of that property is. Yeah, that's a good point. 
I heard you say mention a few things there. I heard you say one um, that you n not only just listen, but you're looking to find areas that maybe they're not familiar with um, and not only to educate them on that, but also assist them uh, in the process. So I heard you say words like the burden, right? If it's a burden on them, I heard you say, you know, it's upkeep. If they're constantly upkeeping, I heard you mention taxes, like if, or if they're paying any like HOA fees yep. or taxes, or if there's money leaving their pocket, I heard you mention that as well. Um, so I, I look at that and say, okay, is there a, are they having a pain or a problem with the property? That's typical. That's what it sounds like, right? Yeah. And, and plus this one has a very, very small loan still on it. Mm. Small, but still monthly payment. They're, they're having to keep up with now. True. True. So, you know, yeah. that's, that's alleviating that issue from them. Also. Right. And having a quick sale without listing it with an agent, without paying maybe agent fees and anything like that, selling it to an investor really quick. That's an also a nice incentive and covering closing costs. Right. I mean, that's always like, I right. think an added bonus that, um, Absolutely. That, that really, and helps. I'm not going in there where a traditional buyer would go in there. It, it's not a new home. It, it was built in 1960. So there's issues with the house where a traditional buyer would come in, bring an inspector and expect, them as sellers to fix those things. They don't have to worry about any of that with me. Right. You know, I'm buying it as is. Yeah. I do want to make something clear to our, you know, our, 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 you know, brand new followers or our, our people who are just getting started in real estate. I should put it that way. People who are just getting started in real estate. When we are working with our clients, like one-on-one, -on -one, um, that is something that you have the ability to do. Like if you need help negotiating a deal, you can like just, listen in on mute and how it's done because that can sometimes choke a lot of people up they don't know the whole process and how to get it done and how to make it happen um, but sometimes you just need that push i mean of course we're going to encourage you to you know um not do it forever hold your hand forever um, but you got to take that leap but it definitely helps um mike you mentioned earlier about you know do it keep doing it and you get better and better at negotiating have you ever been in a really tough negotiation, maybe where you're like, oh man, I totally lost that one or I totally won that one? Both. I've, <laughs> I've lost some really good ones that I should have got. And I've won some that, that I thought I wouldn't win. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, the, the biggest thing is don't let anything intimidate you. I tell students a lot of times, you know, somebody may come up to you and say, well, my property's worth X number of dollars and you know, they're that's retail or they're, it's a crazy number. Don't let their number influence what your number you're going for to be. It may be just educating them, um, and, and showing why their, their numbers off. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it's showing them that those things that they're saying, maybe not necessarily, uh, correct on that property. Everybody's going to be looking at their own property in kind of a biased way. Yeah. I remember what I was going to say uh, in negotiations. There is always, there always has to be a win for the other person. That's yep. kind of like a headline there. So in in any negotiation, and uh, I know there's a, there's a great book out there that talks about this. I think it's because it's been marketed so well and it's by Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference. It's kind of one that a lot of people go to. There are other great books in regards to real estate negotiations that you should read out there. Um, and one of my favorites is, uh, of course, I just forgot the name of the book, but it's by, uh, I forgot the title, but it's President Trump's book called The Art of Negotiation. Thank you. The Art of the Deal. Yeah. The Art of the Deal. Art of the Deal. Yeah. The Art of the Deal. Thank That's you. Yeah. That is a great book about negotiations and deals. I don't know why that the title was spacing me, but. It is a great book to read because it, I mean, he not only breaks down his first few deals, but there is some, um, there's some great tips in there. The, the whole process about the give and take is because you never want to feel, you never want to let your seller feel like they're getting taken advantage of. You never want to let them feel like they've lost. And a good negotiation is where everybody wins right? So there's, there's a win and a win, right? And you've probably heard that so many times before. 
that a good negotiation is where someone benefits, right? So in this case, your seller benefits from their side of things. And that could be a lot of things like you mentioned earlier, Mike, but also you win because you need it at a certain price. So there are some areas that, you know, that need to be identified that you can uh, do that. Um, and, uh, it needs to be done. I think, was that Christy saying that, oh man, she's reading a, Chris Voss. She's, yeah, reading, she's Chris reading Chris Voss. Voss. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's a great, it's a great, uh, that's a great read. Um, so yeah, there has to be, there has to be both sides need to win, uh, in order to have a good successful negotiation. If you ever feel like if you ever leave the, the seller in a bad position, um, then they're going to feel like they've been taken advantage of. And that will definitely block off any future referrals, any future contacts, or they'll, you know, they make you the deal. They may come yeah. back on you and not want to honor the deal, even though you've got a contract, it, it may still create friction for you. And you, I'm glad you brought up that everybody, a good deal. Could you get the, I get to ask that a lot. Well, what's a good deal. And, and you explained it perfectly. It's when each side gets, something that they wanted out of the deal. Everybody ha is happy. Everybody walks away, you know, everybody may not necessarily walk away ecstatic, but everybody is satisfied and happy with what you've agreed to. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's so true. <clears throat> and that, that makes it not only feel good, but it can bring you referrals. It can bring like more business to yeah. you. Like, oh, you know, this person uh, did me well. You know, I have a perfect example. Uh, just recently, probably a week ago, um, you know, we did a great negotiation with uh, a seller and they said that I got an email from, I don't know, what, I don't know if it was their cousin or relative. If I recall, I'll have to go back to the email, but they said, Hey, John referred me to you said you guys did it. You know, uh, he was really happy with, you know, your, the outcome of the transaction. I have some money. I'd like to work with you. Right. So on and so forth. But that was a referral that I didn't ask for, didn't expect in this transaction. But because my um, seller was really happy with the transaction, they referred somebody. So that's that's a, that's a good example of getting, you know, doing good business and helping the other person feel like they're winning as well makes it seem uh, makes it for uh, for good business. Absolutely. I mean, how many times have you? I'm sure it's happened to you where you've done a deal with somebody and then they do refer you on. And you get another deal out of it with maybe a friend, relative, or something of that person. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's what kind of keep. I think people miss out a lot on on the referral part of the business, right? Uh, using referrals, um, I think that's it's a very valuable tool. Um, so another thing about negotiations, Mike, is, well, it's kind of more of like you know, uh, more of a story. What's been uh, maybe the most challenging negotiation you've ever had? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know. It's right. I, I mean, there's been a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of one right off. I, and I had one one time that it, it's kind of a unique story. We'd made an offer on a property and this very rare, seldom happens, but long story short, we got the, or we were looking at buying it and kept digging into it. And it ended up actually having the EPA issue with it, with oh. the environmental protection agency. Yeah. But we kept negotiating it. And, and the guy at first was very hard to, to talk down on price, but long story short, when it was said and done, he actually ended up giving me the property. Oh, dang. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it was, yeah, out of the blue, like we were hardcore negotiating yeah. on the phone. Yeah. And he finally stopped me mid sentence and said, you know what, Mike? I give up. You're a good guy. <laughs> I don't need this property. Why don't I just give it to you? <clears throat> Mike, that was a tap out. I think you did one of your police, you know, the behind no. the arm and you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pick the phone back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you never know with these deals. I, you know, there's some deals that, that you work really hard on to try to make happen yeah. and some do, some don't. If, if it doesn't happen, then it wasn't meant to be. Go to the next deal. That's a good point. Well, that's a good point you bring up. You know, if it doesn't, if it's not meant to happen, but sometimes desperation creeps in, right? Sometimes like, oh, I got to get a deal. I got to make it happen. I got to, got to. And then all of the sudden, 
the deal will just slip through. The person can feel that, right? The, your yeah, seller. Feel your, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You start, you get the blinders on and, and you get desperate. You'll make a mistake. You'll end up paying too much for the property or something like that. Listen, I, there's been timeless deals that, that have actually, I've not gotten at the time. And then they circle back to me maybe months, a year later. And things have changed in their life, but because I wasn't a prick with them or anything, I try to, you know, leave them with a good impression of me. They'll call me back or yeah. they'll call you back and say, Hey, you know what? We can't really make a deal work. Let's try to put this thing together now. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. And this reminds me of recently. I remember some great advice you gave to one of our members in our group. Um, and, uh, they were pretty much like, I don't want to say desperate, but they were hungry for a deal. And a few months went by, a few months went by, they weren't getting anything. They got a, they got, I think they got one under contract with the ease of access road. I can't remember the exact details yeah, of the deal. Yeah. They got involved with the city, right? It was all this stuff was going on. And I remember what you said in one of your messages where you said, guys, the right one is going to come. Just keep moving forward and don't like uh, it was something like don't pressure the deal and and because you everybody it'll, it'll just cause it, people to back out um, and there was a lot of pressure going on and I remember you saying that and I think that's really important because sometimes when people are so on the edge of I just need my next deal they can end up sabotaging sab ugh, sabotaging their own deal uh, because of the uh, let's call it desperation or you know I need you know. The, the desperation of trying to get their next deal. Absolutely. Uh, and you know, it's, it's, we, t we talk about building relationships with buyers, but you got to build relationships with, with sellers too. And, you know, taking, uh, I'm still in this and Dave Seymour, please don't, you know, fly down here and, and jump on me for it. But <laughs> you know, he said um, in, in an interview last month when we were with him, you know, one of the biggest currencies is, is relationships in yeah. 2021 is building relationships that's so true. and that's what we're doing i'm building relationships with not only buyers but sellers also that's a good point yeah building relationships so in in any good negotiation <clears throat> and I'm, we're not just talking hostage negotiation i think most people will think those kinds of things but actually negotiations are everyday practices you can do it every day mike i want to share one quick story with you that uh, years ago when I was reading about, you know, real estate and negotiations, and it wasn't Chris Voss's book, but it was another one, I had this desire to test this stuff out. And I used to go to this cafe every morning. And uh, do you know what Tim Hortons is? I don't know. No, I don't think right? so. Yeah, Tim Hortons is like this coffee shop up in the north. Like it used to be all up in New England and then... Anyway, if anybody knows Tim Hortons, let me know in the comments below. But anyway, I used to go to this Tim Hortons every morning after my first job and I'd go and I'd read and I'd kind of like study up for real estate. And one of the books was says, you know, negotiations is a thing that you do every day. And the best way to get good at it is do something every day. So I started practicing this at the cafe. So Mike, here's what I do. I would literally every day I'd go out. And I would say um, to the to the cashier, I'd pretty much order the same thing every day. I'd order like a uh, hot tea and then, um, or what do you call it? Uh, like whatever, some kind of food, you know, muffin or whatever. And I said, I, I started off with compliments. So I'd say, oh, you know, you guys are so great. You guys are so awesome. You know, I should be your best customer. You guys should get awards. Like, so I would kind of like seed it with compliments and then I would say what I should get in return. I said, you know, I'm such a great customer. I should get free food or free tea, right? I would just kind of seed these thoughts. But you know what's interesting? After a while, um, it worked because the manager, actually she was the owner of that franchise, she ended up giving me free drinks every day that I went there because I was just such a friendly guy. Now, that may not be someone's common way of, of negotiating, but it was kind of interesting because I was asking for what I wanted and I had this goal and it was just something that I could test um, not the ideal situation for real estate, but the important thing is, is that if you do something often enough, it's like sharpening a knife. You're eventually going to get better at it and better at it. You're going to either listen, you're going to look for problems, you're going to compliment, you're going to, you know, add value. 
And that's that I think that was one of my early stages of learning how to do negotiations, probably because I was learning how to negotiate before I was actually really doing it in real estate. So I don't know, fun, fun little story. And Mike, to, to close it out today, you also have a really fun <laughs> story that recently happened to you. Oh, and we do have someone who knows about Tim Hortons. See, Mike, I, I wasn't the only one. See, it's Troy. Troy knows that. about Tim Hortons. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, negotiations. You can, um, you can, you can do negotiations and everything. And, and I and before I tell a story, I'll tell you my my wife. She absolutely hates like going with me to buy cars or if it's because, dude, I, I look at that like as a challenge. That's fun to go in a car dealership and negotiate with the right. salesman and everybody. Like they want me out of there, but yeah, that yeah. I'm done. But um, yeah, I had a, a my my latest negotiation is my wife and I are are um, going to Vegas uh, Saturday for the week, and um, nice. so I call up. I'm a Caesar Reward member, and the Excuse lady me. tries to say, "Well, you know, I give you a, a regular room," and and me that turned into a high maintenance person apparently. <laughs> that I don't. I don't stay in a regular room in Vegas. <laughs> I don't stay in regular rooms. <laughs> I'm better than that. <laughs> and, but I haven't, you know, we, we've been in quarantine, so I haven't gambled as much. So I, don't, sure. I guess I don't have many tear points. But long story short, I negotiated for an hour and a half, hour and 45 <laughs> minutes, and I won. And now we have a paid for suite, two bathroom mm -hmm. suite. Nice. Um, at the Paris Hill or at the Paris Las Vegas. Nice. So um I won on that negotiation. Nice. So exactly. You can negotiate anything. <laughs> didn't cost me a dime. Oh wow. Oh, so, and it didn't cost you a dime. That's a double whammy. That's awesome. No resort fees, no nothing. Everything can be a negotiation. Even even in your family, right? Even and Mike, I'm sure you've had some negotiations with your son recently, like you're always talking about. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Absolutely. And you know, he is like He's a better negotiator than me, actually. Really? Like he, he um, I went with him the other week. He bought a new big commercial zero turn mower and a new trailer. And like he got a good price and he beat them down even further. Oh, so, nice. I mean, it's like he will get deals on anything. He's better than I am. I've got where I let him do my negotiating sometimes. <laughs> That's great. Well, he learned it from you, man. That's what it yeah. is. He learned it from you. Yeah, a great a great place to do that is those like yard sales and and Facebook Marketplace and all that stuff. That's a great training ground to go learn to flex your muscles on negotiations. It really is. Mike, this has been a, a great and fun episode. Great to hear some new uh, fun stories about your present and your past. Uh, and yeah. for everybody else watching, thanks so much for joining along. <laughs> High maintenance Mike in the comments That's from me. Mike Oplack. <laughs> That's great stuff. Thanks so much for everybody for joining along. This is the No Fear Investing Show. We are your hosts, Mike McKenzie and Nathan Amaral. We will see you next week. I think we'll see Mike. Are you going to be here next week or what? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. We'll I think, see. It, I think it's, it's, it's my actual anniversary day. Oh, so, man. Uh, I think we're going to have to give you, we're going to have to cut you a break, man. We're going to have to cut you a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, you enjoy yourself, bud, and we'll see you real soon.